Today, we will be talking about an episode of Black Mirror titled San Junipero. Black Mirror is a British anthology series featuring a diversity of genres. Episodes mostly feature near-future dystopias and utilize science fiction technology. The episode starts with Yorkie, a shy young woman, walking the lively streets of San Junipero. She notices Kelly trying to get away from Wes. Wes follows Kelly inside a nearby club. Yorkie follows them and heads inside the club. As she enters, she sees lots of people partying and having fun. Yorkie spots an arcade and decides to play a game. A stranger comes over and compliments her. The stranger then asks if she wants to play top speed. She turns around to see the game. Yorkie is troubled after seeing a car crash in the game. The stranger asks if she is okay. She then says she's just trying to get her bearings. Yorkie then walks away, and the stranger wonders if he said anything wrong. Yorkie gets a drink and takes a seat on the corner. She first spots Wes looking around. Kelly then rushes and sits beside her after spotting Wes. Kelly tells Yorkie to go along with whatever she says. Wes sees Kelly sitting beside Yorkie and heads towards them. As Wes approaches, Kelly tells him that he is now pestering her. Wes tells her that there's not much time left. Kelly explains to him that last week was just a fling. Kelly tells Wes that she needs to talk to her friend. She adds that her friend only has six months to live. Yorkie corrects her and says she only has five. Convinced, Wes agrees to leave the girls alone. Wes then apologizes and walks away. Kelly says sorry and introduces herself to Yorkie. She compliments Yorkie on how well she improvised. Kelly explains that Wes is not really a bad guy. She then says that she met Wes in the quagmire. Yorkie seems to have no idea what or where the quagmire is. Kelly takes Yorkie to the bar for some drinks. She orders Jack and Coke for both of them. Yorkie initially declines, saying that she just wants Coke. Kelly, however, does not give her any choice. Kelly comments on Yorkie's appearance. She first notices Yorkie's glasses. Yorkie explains that it is more like a comfort thing for her. Kelly then talks about the rest of Yorkie's outfit. She says that Yorkie's look is somewhat refreshing and authentic. As they drink, Kelly asks Yorkie if she lives there. Yorkie says she doesn't, so Kelly assumes that she's a tourist. Yorkie then says that this is her first night there. Music plays, and Kelly asks Yorkie to dance with her. Yorkie initially refuses but eventually goes with Kelly to the dance floor. As they dance, Yorkie starts to feel embarrassed. After just a short while, Yorkie runs away. Kelly runs after Yorkie and finally catches up to her. Kelly asks her why she ran away. Yorkie says she's not much of a dancer. Kelly apologizes for forcing her to dance. She then says that she got impatient and that Saturday nights are just once a week. Yorkie says that the people were looking at them. She tells Kelly that it must be unusual to see two girls dancing. Kelly explains that this is a party town and no one is judging. Yorkie tells Kelly that she hasn't been on a dance floor before. Kelly wonders why this was the case. Yorkie then explains that her parents did not let her do anything. She tells Kelly that she wasn't allowed to enjoy things. Kelly then asks her what she wants to do. Kelly suggests that they can do whatever they want because San Junipero is a party town. She then starts to get intimate with Yorkie. Yorkie jolts up in a panic. Yorkie then begins to explain that she is engaged. She tells Kelly that she has a fiancé named Greg. Kelly asks her if Greg is elsewhere. Kelly then asks Yorkie if she wants to go to bed with her. Yorkie politely declines and tries to explain her side. She then apologizes and starts to leave. She looks back to Kelly and sees no one there. One week later, Yorkie tries on different dresses in front of the mirror. She finally decides to go with the same look she had the week before. The scene cuts to Kelly seeing Wes tailing her again. She warns Wes that she is now red lighting him. Wes begs her to stop and just hear him out. Wes then explains that he wants a real connection and that the locals are like dead people. To this, Kelly responds that what they had was just a fling. Kelly kisses him and then leaves. At the bar, a man starts flirting with Kelly. Yorkie enters the club and sees Kelly. After seeing her too, Kelly asks the guy at the bar to dance. Yorkie watches Kelly from a distance. Kelly goes to the bathroom, and Yorkie follows her. Yorkie tells Kelly that she does not know how to do this. She asks Kelly to make it easy for her. 
Kelly then asks her if she wants to get in her car. Kelly and Yorkie are then seen speeding through the highway. Yorkie asks Kelly how long she has been in San Junipero. Kelly tells her it has been a couple of months. She then continues saying that she is a tourist like Yorkie. They almost get into an accident and swerve to the side of the road. The two then just laugh it off afterward. After arriving at Kelly's bungalow, the two start getting intimate. Later, Yorkie reveals that she has not slept with anyone before. Yorkie curiously asks Kelly when she knew that she liked women. Kelly smiles and says that she fancies men too. The conversation then turns serious as Kelly talks about her past. She says that she was once married to a man. That man, according to Kelly, chose not to stick around. She then says that she'll have a good time before leaving. Kelly turns to the clock and sees that it's almost midnight. She tells Yorkie that time is almost up. To this, Yorkie says that they should just lie there. The scene abruptly ends as midnight comes. Fast forward another week, Yorkie is seen looking for Kelly. She asks the bartender if he saw Kelly. The bartender says that he hasn't seen Kelly all night. He asks if she tried the quagmire. Yorkie decides to go to the quagmire that the bartender mentioned. Quagmire is revealed to be a more intense version of a regular club. Yorkie suddenly runs into Wes. She asks him if he saw Kelly. Wes says he does not know and tells her to try a different time. He advises her to check the 80s, 90s, and the 2000s. Wes then says that Kelly is worth the shot. A week later, Yorkie continues her search for Kelly. The scenes from her search suggest that there is time travel involved. Yorkie goes to Kelly's house but still can't find her. Another week of searching has passed, and it is now 2002. Yorkie finally finds Kelly playing Dance Dance Revolution. She tries to approach Kelly and talk to her. Kelly then tells Yorkie that she doesn't owe her anything and walks out. Yorkie follows Kelly to the bathroom. She then continues asking Kelly why she disappeared. Kelly tells her that it was all about fun and things were no longer fun. Yorkie gets hurt with what Kelly said and leaves. Feeling bad, Kelly breaks the mirror after punching it. She looks at her hand and does not see any wounds. She then glimpses back at the mirror, and the cracks are gone. Feeling remorse about what she said, Kelly starts looking for Yorkie. She approaches a couple and asks if they saw a girl in glasses. The couple points her in the direction of the rooftop. She looks up and sees Yorkie sitting up there staring at the sky. As Kelly approaches, Yorkie asks her how many people below are dead. Kelly answers about 80 to 85 percent of them are. At this point, it is heavily implied that all of them are in an alternate reality. Kelly starts to apologize to Yorkie. She then explains that she just wants to have fun there and not make connections. Kelly tells Yorkie that she ended up liking her. This, in turn, freaked her out. She explains that she left because she was not there for the connection. Before Kelly can finish explaining herself, Yorkie stops her with a kiss. Later at Kelly's place, Yorkie reveals that she is getting married next week. She explains her situation rather vaguely, but Kelly does not mind. Kelly then tells Yorkie that she does not have long to live. It is implied that she has cancer and that it is spreading everywhere. Yorkie asks if Kelly will be staying in San Junipero forever after she passes. Kelly says that she won't. She then tells Yorkie that it is because of her husband in real life. Kelly's husband died two years ago and decided not to go to San Junipero. Kelly explains that he just didn't believe in what the place stands for. Yorkie says that if it wasn't for San Junipero, they wouldn't have met each other. The two of them talk about meeting each other in real life. This further confirms that they are indeed in a simulated reality. Kelly asks where Yorkie is from and says she can just look it up. Yorkie says she's from Santa Rosa, California. Yorkie adds that Kelly might be scared off. Kelly tells her that she is dying, and she doubts anything can scare her off. In reality, an aged Kelly goes to visit Yorkie. Accompanied by her caretaker, Kelly enters an assisted living facility. It seems that she is expected as she goes to Yorkie's room. They discover Yorkie to be a quadriplegic elderly woman. The doctor explains that Yorkie cannot respond physically, but she'll be able to hear her. Kelly walks over to Yorkie's bed and tells her it is good to see her. As Kelly starts to leave the facility, a nurse approaches her. The nurse introduces himself as Greg. Kelly remembers him as Yorkie's fiancé. He then asks Kelly to get some coffee and talk about Yorkie. Greg explains what happened to Yorkie. 
he tells Kelly that Yorkie has been like that for over 40 years. It started when she was 21 and told her parents about her sexuality. As Yorkie's parents were deeply religious, they got upset with this revelation. Greg then reveals that Yorkie drove and crashed her car afterward. The San Junipero virtual reality system is then explained by Greg. In this simulated reality, the dead can pass over their consciousness and live as their younger selves forever. Older people can also visit for only five hours a week. These visits end at midnight. Greg explains that he and Yorkie have been communicating through a comm box for three years now. He then says that Yorkie plans to get euthanized and spend her afterlife in a virtual reality system. Yorkie, however, cannot simply be euthanized because of the law. The law states that euthanization can only be authorized by a spouse or a family member. Because of this, the only loophole available to them is to have Yorkie marry Greg. Greg can then sign the euthanization papers and allow Yorkie to pass over to San Junipero forever. After hearing about Yorkie's situation, Kelly asks Greg a favor. She asks for some time with Yorkie before she leaves. Greg agrees but says that he can only give them five minutes. In San Junipero, Kelly runs to Kelly and tells her what she knows. Yorkie apologizes for not telling the whole truth. Kelly then kneels down and asks Yorkie to marry her instead. Yorkie agrees, and they kiss each other. Back in reality, Kelly and Yorkie get married. Kelly then authorizes euthanization. With this, Yorkie passes over her consciousness to San Junipero forever. Yorkie is then seen smiling as she takes off her glasses and sits on the beach. After going back home, Kelly enters the simulated reality to see Yorkie again. She shows up in a wedding dress and drives off with Yorkie afterward. Later that night, Yorkie and Kelly hang out on the beach. Initially, Yorkie tells Kelly how happy she is now that she has passed over. Yorkie then expresses her frustration about Kelly only being able to join her for five hours per week. Yorkie impulsively asks Kelly to pass over to San Junipero when her time comes. Kelly tells her that they should just enjoy the moment. Yorkie continues to press Kelly until the latter decides to leave. Yorkie apologizes and tries to stop Kelly from leaving. She insists that Kelly shouldn't waste their chance. She continues and blames Kelly's husband for choosing not to pass over. Taking offense, Kelly slaps Yorkie in the face. She tells Yorkie that she was married for 49 years. She says that she really loved the man she married. Kelly explains how her time together with her husband was. Kelly then reveals why her husband did not want to pass over to San Unipero. The reason is their daughter, Allison. Allison died at age 39, and San Unipero did not exist yet. Kelly explains that her husband decided not to pass over because their daughter didn't get the chance. She also promised her husband to do the same. She made this promise even without believing in an afterlife. Kelly, however, hopes that her husband and daughter are reunited. Kelly expresses her anger and disappointment towards Yorkie as she drives off. As midnight approaches, Kelly speeds up and purposely crashes her car. Kelly gets thrown off after the crash. She gets up and sees no injury whatsoever. Kelly then sees Yorkie trying to help her up. As Kelly reaches back to Yorkie, time runs out, and she disappears. As time passes, Kelly's condition worsens. Kelly then decides that it is time. Her caretaker asks her what she means. She answers that she is ready for the rest of it. In San Unipero, we see Yorkie driving off to somewhere in her car. Scenes cut to Kelly finally getting euthanized. Kelly's body is then buried with her family. In the following scene, it is revealed that Yorkie was actually driving to pick up Kelly. As it turns out, Kelly decided to pass her consciousness over to San Unipero. In there, she and Yorkie can continue living happily ever after. In the real world, robots are seen maintaining the servers of San Unipero. Heaven is a place on Earth plays in the background as the episode ends. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel.